I started this shelving project by breaking down some hard maple boards that I picked up at my local lumber dealer, Asheville Hardware. So when building shelving like this, the length will really be dictated by your stud locations as you're gonna need to hit at least two studs with the mounting hardware, at least the mounting hardware I'm using. And because of my stud spacing, my shelves ended up at 39 inches long. After milling the boards flat and square over at the planer and jointer, I ripped the boards to width at the table saw, cutting away as little material as I could while cleaning up the edge. Also, if you don't have a planer or jointer, you could just buy pre-milled lumber in the widths you need and skip the milling process altogether. And if you just bought wide enough boards, you could skip all of this gluing process while you're at it. Anyway, with the boards flat and square on all four sides, I could lay out which boards I wanted to glue together to create my shelves. I made sure to pay attention to any imperfections and try to orient those so that they face the ceiling on the topmost shelf, since that won't be visible in the final installation. I also touched up the two mating edges of the boards at the jointer just to make sure they were nice and smooth. And I also ran the opposite face of each board against the jointer fence when doing this just to cancel out any error in the squareness of my fence. So to help with alignment during the glue up, you guessed it, I added some dominoes. So next I laid out locations for those and cut the mortises in those locations. Once the mortises were cut, I could get the two boards that made up each shelf glued together using plenty of glue. After letting the boards sit in the clamps overnight, I ran them through my jointer to clean them up, and then I could run them through my drum sander to really smooth them out. With the faces of the shelves cleaned up, I jointed one edge again and then ripped the shelves to final width at the table saw. I decided to have the widths of the shelves get smaller as the shelves got higher, both because I think it looks nice visually, but also because it'll allow more light from the wall sconce I'll be installing above these shelves to make it to the countertops below. Finally, I could cut the shelves to final length at the miter saw, setting up a stop block to make sure they were all the exact same length. Also, I really need to get my stop block system reinstalled on this miter saw station. I never reinstalled it after moving my shop, and I have definitely been missing having it. Next, I needed to work on drilling some holes for the mounting hardware I'd be using, which were these heavy duty blind shelf supports from Rockler in my case, which I'll link to in the video description below. So first I aligned the edges of the boards and then marked out the stud locations on the back edge, and this just ensured the shelves would line up perfectly in the final installation. Next, I marked a center line at each hole location and then used a center punch to help keep my drill bit from drifting while starting the hole. To help stabilize these fairly wide boards while I worked on them at the drill press, I added a hand screw clamp where the board met the drill press table, and this worked pretty well. I actually didn't have a drill bit long enough in the size I needed to drill these holes to full depth initially, so I just started them with this Forstner bit and then came back later to finish the holes. While drilling, I did make sure to back out the bit frequently to clear the chips, as otherwise the bit can get stuck in the hole. As I mentioned, the hand screw clamp worked well enough, but I decided to whip up a quick fence for my drill press table just to help hold things in place while I drilled these holes, and I'm definitely glad to have a fence like this for my drill press now. And this fence also allowed me to have one hand free, and I used that to help collect the ridiculous amount of chips created by drilling out these holes, and this project made me really want to look into making a drill press table with some built-in dust collection. Anyway, with the holes drilled on the back edge of the boards, next I could work on routing out an area to provide clearance for the mounting hardware. I initially whipped up a quick jig for this out of some scrap plywood, cutting the center hole with a Forstner bit and a jigsaw, then adding some side supports to help align the jig on the back edge of the shelves. To use the jig, I mounted it on the shelf, aligning the center line I added in the jig opening with the center line on the back of the shelf, which I added before drilling the holes. Before actually routing, I set the plunge depth on my router and then cut the recess in two passes using a template bit. And as you can see, the bearing on my template bit was actually slipping, which took me <laughs> way too long to realize. And this caused the bit to cut past my template, leaving me with a pretty janky looking recess. Thankfully, this recess was just for clearance, but it was still frustrating after spending the time making a jig. And because I ruined this jig during this project and plan to use this same hardware again in the future, I actually decided to remake this jig after finishing all of the routing, and I figured I'd show you what I came up with in case you wanted to make something similar. 
The way I made the previous jig meant that it would only work on shelves that were the exact same thickness as the shelves I made in this video. And since I'm planning to use this same hardware with some double stacked 3 quarter inch plywood shelves in the future, I figured I could make an adjustable jig instead. So I whipped up a quick design in Easel, which is Inventable's free design software, and then headed over to my Xcarve CNC to cut the template. And this is one of my favorite tasks for the Xcarve, as I can make adjustments to this template in the future if I use different hardware, or I can just recut the template if my <laughs> bearing slips again and screws up the template. And this only took about 12 minutes to cut, so it would be super easy to recut this template in the future if needed. So after cutting, I cleaned up the piece off camera and then marked hole locations that matched up with the slots I cut on the template on a few scraps of plywood, and these would make up the new side supports. I drilled holes in these locations over the drill press, threaded in some threaded inserts into the holes, and finally I could attach the template top to the side supports after <laughs> grabbing some longer bolts. I also marked out some center lines on the jig, although I might have done this on the X-Carve with a small V-bit, just for a little more accuracy if I had thought of it. As you can see, those mounting slots make it really simple to center the jig on whatever material I'm working with, just by lining up the center line on the jig with the center line on the piece. And the beauty is I can quickly readjust the jig to work on a thicker or thinner piece if needed. And I really like the way this jig came together and it makes me want to try to think outside of the box and make more adjustable jigs like this in the future so that they aren't just one-time use jigs for one project. Anyway, back to the project, I routed the rest of the recesses in the backs of the shelves with the old jig, which that loose bearing on the router bit did completely ruin, and then I went back with a longer drill bit to drill the holes to full depth. While I'm drilling, let's take a second to talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Trade Coffee. So I've actually been a Trade Coffee customer for at least the past year or so, and I love their service, so I'm really excited to talk to y'all about them. So Trade keeps you stocked with freshly roasted, custom-matched coffee that suits your taste perfectly, all delivered conveniently to your doorstep. So to help Trade get to know your coffee tastes, you take a quick quiz on their website, which will then match you with a few coffee choices. Next, you can choose how often you want your coffee delivered, and then once your coffee has arrived and you've had a chance to try it, you can go back to the Trade website to rate your matches. So if you currently buy your coffee from a grocery store or a large chain that rhymes with char clucks, <laughs> I think you'll be amazed at how much of a difference a freshly roasted bag of coffee can make in your morning routine. So if you'd like to try Trade for yourself, now is the perfect time to sign up as Trade is giving the first 100 people who click my link below 30% off your first bag. Big thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to the project. With the hardware installation done, I could get the shelves prepped for finish, starting with a heavy chamfer on the bottom of the shelves. So if you watched my Ceruzed Oak dining table video, you'll know I recently picked up this monstrous 60 degree chamfer bit, and I wanted to use it on the bottom edge of these shelves as well to lighten up the look. And since this bit removes so much material, I made this cut in multiple passes over the router table, and I also used the router table fence to help support the piece as I worked. I ended up with a super clean surface right off of the router, and I really love the way this profile made these shelves look. After chamfering the bottom edges, I came back and added a lighter chamfer to the top edges of the shelves, and then I could sand them up to 180 grit, also breaking all those edges while I was at it. For the finish on these shelves, I decided to keep things nice and simple and use the aptly named Simple Finish from my buddies over at Maker Brand. And Simple Finish just wipes on in a few coats and is then ready to go after wiping off the excess. It really couldn't be easier. Before heading back to my house to install the shelves, I created a quick drilling guide from a scrap piece of just two layers of three quarter inch plywood glued together. And this guide helped keep my drill bit square while drilling the holes for the other half of this shelf hardware, which you'll see in a minute. Speaking of which, next I headed back to the house and got underway installing the shelf hardware. So I started out by laying out the location of the first bracket on the first shelf, and then set my line laser to match the height of that first location so that I could transfer that height to the other two bracket locations. With the hole locations marked out, I could drill the holes, starting them with the drilling guide. And as you can see, by placing the guide flat against the wall, the drill bit is forced to go in square to the surface of the wall. Once I drilled as deep as I could with the guide in place, I removed the guide and drilled the hole to full depth, with the bit being guided by the hole itself at that point. Once the pin was fully seated in the wall, I could remove the front half of the bracket and get the back half attached to the wall permanently. 
And since the locations of these mounting holes obviously fall outside of where a stud would be located in a traditionally framed wall, drywall anchors are used here. But that said, these screws are really just holding this half of the bracket in place, not really providing strength. The strength of these brackets comes from the pin on the back half of the bracket being embedded in the studs, so this connection to the wall is a lot less important. After attaching the back half of the shelf support to the wall, I reattached the front half loosely just to give me plenty of wiggle room when adding the shelf. Speaking of which, next I could slide the shelf onto the support, and thankfully things lined up really nicely so I could get the supports adjusted. And the real beauty of these supports is the amount of adjustability they provide once the shelf is on the wall, because if you've ever installed shelves like these, you know that getting these kinds of shelves level both left and right, as well as front to back, can be extremely tricky, especially if you don't have a perfectly flat wall to start with. So to adjust for level in the left to right direction, you can adjust the brackets up and down vertically where they attach to the wall, and this is locked into place with the small button head screws. You can also adjust the tilt angle of the pin protruding from the wall with a few set screws, and this adjusts the shelf for level coming out from the wall. And I actually set this pin angle so the front edge of the shelf was slightly higher than level, just to account for any slight sag that's created when loading the shelf down with items, which are going to be a bunch of heavy plates and bowls in our case. With that first shelf in, I could install the brackets for the other two shelves, which proved to be a little bit more awkward considering I was working over our counters, but I eventually got them installed and adjusted. The final piece to this project was installing a wall sconce above these shelves to provide some much needed light in our kitchen. So I tapped into the existing circuit in this area and actually repurposed the old switch location for our disposal to control this light, since the disposal is now being controlled with a push button over at the sink. With the light installed besides a little paint and some shelf staging, I could call these floating shelves finished. I really love the way they've opened up this side of our kitchen. These types of open shelves are perfect for displaying those nicer pieces, like these locally made East Fork pottery plates and bowls, and their openness kind of forces you to keep them clutter free, or at least that's the hope. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Also, if you want to build a project like this yourself, check out the links to the tools and materials I used in the video description below. And last, while you're here, why not check out this video of mine that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next time, happy building.